Welcome Climate Viewers, this is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It is August 27th, 2018, and I want to talk some smack about good old Rob Rubin. Um, homeboy's at it again. Um, apparently he's found a new target, and uh, I just want to bring this to light because... Um, Amanda, um, Bays is the fifth individual that has crossed paths with this lunatic and, uh, had to be, you know, be on the receiving end of his shenanigans. Um, I've actually done a previous video about Rob Rubin, links in the details above, um, and, you know, how he treated me. We're going to get into that and everything. Um, but you know, I, I received a, a semi distress call, um, from Amanda Danielle, uh, today about Rob Rubin and, you know, it's kind of freaking ridiculous. Um, you know, the way this guy goes. So for those who don't know, Amanda and I have a history, um, back before she ever outed herself or told anybody her real name uh she was just madison star moon um anonymous individual speaking out about chemtrails and i invited her to tell her story at an epa speech on flight pollution and she went with me and in order to do that she had to put her real name on the record and it was a big move for her I know it was scary, um, but you can read all about that. Uh, the article is my speech to the EPA um, on flight pollution, and the video is right below it. You can click play on that thing, and you can see her Being talking and write about Good here. morning. My name is Amanda Bays, and I live in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to you today. For the past five years, I have documented aircraft emitting trails across the sky. I have taken hundreds of videos and thousands of photographs of these persisting emissions. Many of the aircraft I have witnessed appear to be spraying something into the atmosphere. Uneasy with my observations, I wanted to know exactly what was causing the aircraft to leave, leave visible trails that did not dissipate. So check that video out. Um, many people don't even know this happened. Um, but yeah, in August um, 11th, 2015, um, myself, Amanda, um, Patrick Roddy, and Max Bliss uh, with Michael Saraceno went up to Washington, D.C. And we, you know, gave the EPA hell. And I appreciated her doing that because, you know, she had made numerous calls to the, you know, various government agencies and always got the runaround. So I wanted her to tell her story. That's why I invited her. And I've invited her on the show today um, to talk about what's going on with Rob Rubin. So, Amanda, why don't you go ahead and unmute and say hello to everybody. Hey, Jim, how are you? Better than ever want to fight about it. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, to miss that. It's a southern thing. Um, okay. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate that you had to cross paths with the unruly Rob Rubin. For those who don't know who Rob Rubin is, I've got him up here on the screen. Uh, link to he's blocked me on Facebook, but little does he know I have one second account i only have one extra account i have no sock puppets or shills in fact you can see my sock puppet my second account says jim lee on it um but this is what his account looks like so we all know who we're talking about here his facebook.com slash rob dot ruben dot one four eight and uh i'll drop that link in details over here for you guys um this guy, um, originally I was on Kate Willen's show and he, you know, my show was about, you know, geoengineering, obviously. And he basically, he and another individual lit into my ass about, um, not supporting, uh, Jolie Diane's, um, anti-geoengineering proposal. 
which had nothing to do with the show, wasn't mentioned on the show or anything. I was talking about my solution, um, the NMOD AA Environmental Modification Accountability Act. So at the time, Rob was supporting Jolie Diane. Um, I call Rob a sidler. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar. Are you familiar with the Jerry Seinfeld quote? You know, sidler? No. A, a, a sidler is somebody who like stands next to somebody else who's doing things important as to seem like they are important. Right. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a sidler. And, um, you know, after a while he switched from Jolie Diane to Peter Valentino. Um, right. This guy who was running for something in California and, you know, everybody knew he had no chance in hell of getting elected. I told him so in a PM. He didn't like that very much. And he hated me for not supporting Peter Valentino. So first it was he hated me because I didn't support Jolie Diane. By the way, for those who don't know, Jolie Diane was at our EPA hearing. She ate at the table with us. You remember? Yes, of course. Yeah, after after we had the EPA hearing, she had showed up out of nowhere, and I didn't know her from a hole in the wall. All I knew was that somehow she was at the table with us eating lunch after the EPA hearing. Um, right, because she met all of us afterwards. Huh? She she introduced herself to us after the EPA hearing, and she said that she had you know she had been following all of us and she and all this, and we just invited her to come eat with us. That's yeah. how it happened. Yeah, and I mean it was completely yeah. you know innocent and all that, and um, you know she asked some questions, and I thought it was cool. And, you know, she showed love, you know, she's linked back to climateviewer.com, you know, on her website. But since she and Rosalind Peterson, God rest her soul, um, came out with that geoengineering resolution, um, you know, that proposal for Rhode Island, in it, she mentioned that basically in the legislation, it says, um, you know, basically any kind of geoengineering except jet fuel which are normal emissions, blah, 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 blah. So I messaged her privately to say, hey, you know, why'd you do that? <laughs> you know, everything I'm covering shows that that's what the geoengineers intend to use. That's what they are using is jet fuel to geoengineer the sky. Um, and I know me and you, we kind of have different opinions on this. And I'm, you know, the day we all agree is the day we could all be wrong. Um, but... You know, I, I said, I can't really support this because as I see it, you're basically giving a pass to the airline industry in this law. And I asked her about it privately in a PM and she never responded. Then I got asked by an Associated Press reporter my opinion on her proposal. So I made a video about it and I read the entire proposal and I said, here's what I agree with. Here's what I disagree with. And I don't believe that this will actually solve a damn thing because it has no teeth. I mean, what could Rhode Island do about, you know, global freaking programs? Um, anyway, so that's when I initially bumped heads with Rob Rubin and he, you know, was like, I can't believe you would, you know, fight and fellow activists, uh -huh. you know? Uh -huh. And and all I said was, and even in the video I made, I said, nonetheless, I support Jolie Diane. Go to zero geoengineering um, dot com. I think it is. You know, I showed her website in the video. I said I support Rosalind Peterson. I showed Agriculture Defense Coalition. You know, and I said, and go support them. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they will make some headway with this. Um, nonetheless, I was on Rob Rubin's shit list after that. And, you know, he interrupted my Kate Willens show, you know, thread to harass me. Then he went to the Peter Valentino guy and, you know, harassed me on Twitter and other places for not supporting this guy. Meanwhile, I was in Peter Valentino's live feed on John Knox's wall going, hey, I agree with 90% of what this guy's saying. This is awesome. Um, and then he made a point to say, John Knox says that he did not invite you to the live feed. And I'm like, I saw it as an update, dude. I just watched the video. You know, like, he picks the smallest things to, like, latch onto and then harass the hell out of you about. 
And I'm, I'm right. assuming that's probably what happened to you. Um, no, it's completely different. Okay. Well, let me finish this last little bit with Rob Rubin. So then, um, you know, he moved on to Chris Haskell. And, you know, Chris Haskell got arrested. You know, Jim Lee won't, you know, nobody supporting, you know, Chris Haskell. And so he was sidling up to Chris Haskell. And, and I was like, you know, just to shut Rob up, I shared like one post about it. And he was like, at least Jim Lee shared one post about Chris Haskell. So he can't be a complete chill. Um, and it really, you know, this, this, this all goes back to, you know, as he claims it, Ralph Eli from the Liberty Beacon. So according to Rob Rubin, I went to the American Meteorological Society's um, 21st conference on planned and inadvertent weather modification and you can see it here reset the zoom and you know i did a bunch of interviews at a weather modification conference so i, I interviewed raytheon ucar the u.s naval research lab and three geoengineer scientists and you know I asked them very tough questions and I talked about my solution to geoengineering and surprisingly many of them agreed with it. Even um, David Keith emailed me saying, you know, hey, I support your solution. I would be willing to lobby on behalf of this. Um, and Ken Caldera, even though he begrudgingly um, said he supports it, said that he believes it's a non-issue. So, they whipped up a conspiracy, according to Rob Rubin. Ralph Eli said, David Keith is now funding Jim Lee. And in private conversations with um, Rob Rubin, I had said, look, I'm working on this thing called an attention. It's an open source social media platform. And, you know, we're going to make sensors for your backyard so you can test your rain and view your sky. And I said... I think I said something to the effect that just the data set alone would be worth billions, you know, because to these scientists, it would be a lot of information that they could use to do science on and prove our case. Um, so he then used that to whip up this conspiracy that a, I was funded by David Keith B I was trying to become a billionaire, um, you know, from, you know, making an open source program <laughs> and he's been spreading this to everybody. And that's where you come in. Apparently he's been trying to spread this bullshit to you. So why don't you tell everybody in your words, you know, your experience <laughs> with Rob Rubin, um, because I think people will find it fascinating. Oh, great. Okay. So I guess it goes back a year. I, went back to the first Facebook message I had ever received from him. Um, and it right out of the gate, you know, it was suspicious. And I told him so. I, and I, I was looking over a year's worth of conversations that we had had and continuously throughout this short social media relationship that we've had online, it's been continuous me being suspicious of him and his actions. And so the most recent the straw that broke the camel's back was this recent thing where well, he was continuously calling me about you. And it was really annoying mm -hmm. to me. He was constantly, he, I already know the story that you just said, except, you know, it, he called me like frantic, like, oh, I got it. I got it on Jim Lee and all this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, oh, yeah, he's working with David Keith. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he told me the whole he had this whole thing, like, and he kept trying to convince me of it. I kept telling him, are you sure? Do you have facts? You know, is there something that you're, you, you know, whatever. Is this just something you heard and all this? And he just kept going on and on. He was all hysterical. And, and it wasn't just you, but you were definitely the main target. I mean, and so then um, him and I, his thing is, I can't prove any of this, so I don't really want to speculate on it, but I've been doing an investigation since this all went down to try to figure out who Rob Rubin actually is in real life and stuff. And so um, through my investigation, it's been very short, um, I'm uncovering all different kinds of anomalies between him and this other account that I've had similar problems with. And both of them, I went back on both of the conversations and they both start off the same way, just shilling out on me. 
and uh, just being real trolly. And, uh, for example, um, trying to incite anger in me against other activists by, by just hating on them and telling me bad things that they've done that I shouldn't trust. And uh, doing a lot of that with many different, almost every big name you can think of. And at one point, he suggested to me that I completely abandon all my connections with everybody, leave all my groups behind because they're all shills and they're all this and that. And I told him, I don't want to cuss on your channel, but I said, get effed. Okay, I said I would never abandon all my friends Feel and all the free, hard work I put into this. It was real shady, and I'm like, is the guy just crazy? So I did a little cointel uh, with uh, some mutual connections and found out that it may be something psychological. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna x that out. He may just be a troublemaker, but to me, it's the makings of agent provocateur. Everything I've been taught about that. And, I mean, we know our community is infiltrated. I mean, we've got to admit that some of them probably did fool us. Now, with the Valentino stuff and all that, I always let him put everything on my page about all of it, about Chris Haskell. I've always supported Chris. I've always support, I've allowed everybody to do whatever they want on the page. So, And I just feel like he just totally – I sent you the thing. I don't know if you read it. I don't want to read it over the thing. But you saw all the stuff he said to me, you know, and that's just like, yeah. wow, okay. You, you're crazy, and it made me feel real unsettled because, can I, can I throw out my conspiracy theory angle on it, please? Of course. Just for entertainment purposes, okay. So, this Canadian dude got over on me, like, many years ago. He was a total show. He was an actual plant, right? All right, so he got over on me, and the first time I ever talked to a dude, he sounded exactly like the guy, and he had the same Canadian accent. So I was wondering, is Rob Canadian? Does, is that saying he lives in California? I mean, why does he have a Canadian accent? Am I just imagining that? So, just weird. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I've got some some you know, you know history with Rob. Uh, you know, like we at first it was you know, hey buddy, this and that, asking me questions. Um, you know. Uh, I hope you're okay with supporting Peter's anti gubernator anti twenty agenda twenty one gubernatorial run. We just released a new video. Yeah, please support um, you know, Peter Valentino. Thoughts on compressed air being used as fuel? Trust your fam with Jamie Lee on a plain truth. And I said it's bullshit to distract from the research proving it's all in the fuel tank. Yeah. Of course. I need to I need to interject. Uh, yeah. About that, about Jamie Lee. Okay, so let's take it a bit further, go down the hole. All right, so me and Rob have had this this issue, this altercation, and I blocked him. I just said I can't take it anymore, right? Yeah. Well, so then he goes to Jamie Lee, who is from A Plain Truth, who has used much of my footage in his videos, and I've always been, like, so honored and been, like, you know, because I was a big fan and all this stuff. All of a sudden, because those two are friends, Jamie comes on my page and says, are you ever going to discuss the wildfires in California um, by directed energy weapons or um, geoengineering? Or is that, in quotation marks, not your thing? <laughs> on my page, like, I was like, oh, my God, what is going on? My, my mentor or my idol or whatever, my YouTube you know, person that I watch all the time, now he fucking hates me out of nowhere. And so I confronted him and I said, hey, what's up with that? Why'd you send me that? Why'd you post that on my page? And I was, and he continued to show out on me. And I thought, man, is this Rob? Like, that's made a fake profile? I mean, it just got really weird. And I've talked to mutual friends of Jamie. They say he didn't do it. That he didn't even write that stuff. I made a post about it on Facebook. And then here comes Jamie Lee from A Plain Truth, the guy that I've, that's used my videos and been so, you know, uh, proud of me and such a good friend and all this stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, now he's like, it was just crazy. And uh, I didn't block him, but I was just like, what the hell? And all the mutual friends are saying he didn't do it. So I'm just like, what's, what's going on here? Well, you know? I mean, I, you know, Jamie Lee, like, he he mentioned um, Climate Viewer briefly in, like, a couple videos. And then he did what every other, you know, activist that I've ever met who's got more than 10,000 subscribers does. He just starts to use my stuff without mentioning me again and um <laughs> it's interesting like i put out my video on the california fires and i had just recently done something on directed energy 
So I put out the Direct Energy Professional Society logo in my video. And his very next video was pretty much him showing the Directed Energy Professional Society's website, the entire damn video. And I'm yeah. like, you know, I just, I laugh about this stuff, you know, like, um, you know, all of these people are grab asses. They, you know, they'll, they'll take other people's stuff. They never give credit. Um, and I'm used to that. Um, but, you know, at the, at the very end of the day, um, you know, we, I, this, this video isn't about California fires. This is about people talking shit and, you know, being <laughs> nefarious and, you know, I've already yeah. got it from Dane Wigington, uh, Russ Tanner, Matt Landman, and now Rob Rubin. <laughs> you know, all Sorry. all four going around telling everybody, you know, that I'm a shill, I'm a gatekeeper, I'm a this, I'm a that. And, you know, I I just shake my head, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, I'm the only person on the internet completely who has a freaking map of every nsa facility on the globe so how does it make any sense that i'm a gatekeeper or shill when i tweeted glenn greenwald and wikileaks and you know freaking you name it saying hey you guys are talking about the five eyes and the stone ghost network well, I got a map of that. They wouldn't cover it. I called InfoWars. They wouldn't cover it. I was interviewed by InfoWars at G. Over Griffin's conference. That I showed my map and all the stuff on it. The two that interviewed me, their jaw was on the floor the entire time. And they're like, this is the most sick video I've ever seen. I cannot wait to see this You know, up on um, InfoWars. It was never played. Um, so Great. You know, I'm just, I'm used to it, but, you know, at the same time, when you allow, um, you know, these people to work in darkness and to go around and spread, you know, FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt about you, um, yeah, for long exactly. periods of time, that's, that's how they, you know, ruin reputations and their whole exactly, goal yeah. is to keep it. was a domino effect with Rob. It started off with Matt Lamon. He was playing on the fact that me and Matt Lamon had had that issue and it was public and everything so he played on that latched onto that and then oh matt lamman's bad he's a shill he's this and that and i'm like no i may not like the guy but he may not be a shill i don't know i don't even care it's of no moment to me these are people i don't even deal with you know what i'm saying and so he would just call me and it wasn't it was alana and it was everybody else and i mean i have my own issues with people i don't need someone else calling me trying to make me hate other and it was like only targeting activists that have made a name for themselves in the chemtrail geoengineering community. He wasn't going after anybody. I, I know what he did. Sorry, I have to add this in. He messed up. He overplayed his hand. He told me, came, he was like, oh, did you hear? And all of a sudden, I'm like, what? He's like, oh, one of your friends thinks you're a Freemason shill and all this. And I'm like, oh, really? And who might that be? He's like, oh, yeah. I, I don't want to tell you because I don't want to cause any drama. I'm like, yeah, give me a break. <laughs> That's so, his whole game. <laughs> It's yeah, his, so he gives, gives, gives up my friend Chris, my poor, innocent friend Chris, that, I mean, he may or may not have said something, I don't know, but he was, he's one of my great friends, so you're never going to get, you know, anything to air. And uh, he just ended up losing us both as friends because he was just trying to cause, you know, oh, I can see this guy's, you know, commenting a lot on her page. They must be close. Let me go and try to cause some drama between them. And it was like, that was like everybody. He always had a new story. He would call me up, did you hear the big news? I'm like, uh, no, I've been at work all day. What are you talking about? You know, I mean, more drama, more this person's been exposed for that and all this. And it's always people within our own community. That's shady. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's divide and conquer at its finest. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's what I deal with on a daily basis. And I, tr I try to avoid it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I, the worst enemies that I have are, other people in the air quotes community you know what i mean like um you know russ tanner literally banning anybody who links to any one of the three websites i have and then sending them a personal message to say hey you know we greatly appreciate your post but jim lee is a disinfo agent for the epa when i'm the one that caused the epa hearing 
is just it's insanity to me and it's not like i went up there and just preached my own gospel i had you and matt and max bliss and patrick roddy come because you guys have different opinions than i have and right. i wanted them all on the books not just my version of the truth because i could be wrong you know what i mm -hmm. mean and that's why i appreciated you guys coming the problem was when i got back you know, what did Patrick Roddy do? He cut out everybody else from the video and he only showed <laughs> his testimony to his fans and made sure nobody yeah. saw us. Um, and, and I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, like I, I don't understand the, the, the ego and all of this. Um, you know, I really wish that there was, uh, you know, um, one moment real quick while I, I let me see if I can get this up here on the chat uh, personal fuck you to Daryl Boggs <laughs> you fickle motherfucker um, no there is no GoFundMe attached to this video this is simply talking truth to power and individuals who go around running their fucking mouths are going to get told on that's what I do I just speak the truth so mm -hmm. no GoFundMe's here this is just me and Amanda talking shit about <laughs> Rob yes. because, you know, he's a punk ass and he runs his mouth and tries to divide the community. So, sorry, Daryl. I mean, why are you even here? Won't you why do you me? think, Tim? Because he's a little grab ass and he wants attention. Well, you got it, buddy. You got it, buddy. Anyway, back, back to the show. So, yeah, I've, I've had many an individual who, um, you know, try to cast their aspersions on me um, and, you know, tell me who I am or what I'm trying to be, that I'm in it for the money, that I'm doing it for this or that. But I think my work speaks for itself. I think that your dedication to this topic for years on end and enduring the kaku trolling um, shows that, you know, you're in it for the long haul despite you know all the haters um but you know it just it, it always just you know burns my ass when i find out that somebody's going around behind my back um spreading rumors and lies and anytime i find out well, i don't out know that, how many people he told jim because if he told me i mean think about how many other people he told and he uh, was saying it like it was fact Oh, no. So I mean, he, said like, it, he said it to yeah. several other people who came to me and told me, you know, what he was saying. Um, and these are pretty prominent people. Um, some of them are downright famous. And one of which was even like, this is the, you know, Rob Rubin is the first person I've ever blocked on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Damn. I mean, that's, that's, pre that's, pre that's pretty damn yeah. harsh right there. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's downright pathetic. Uh, you know, I, I, I hate having to deal with these sorts of issues, but you know, if you, if you just let it slide and you just don't say anything about it, eventually, um, you know, room, you know, Ben Franklin said glass, China and reputation all are easily broken and never well mended. And that's the goal of these individual dividers. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't let that shit slide. So that's why we're doing this video tonight. I, when you reached out to me about it, I was like, there's another one. You're like the fifth or sixth person that he's flipped on. Um, apparently he doesn't have somebody to saddle up next to right now. Um, so that he can hate anybody else that doesn't support what he's currently supporting. Um, because he feels some sort, uh, some sort of empowerment through um, backing certain individuals, and then he, I guess, he can go to those individuals and say, "Look, man, I really supported your work." Meanwhile, I destroyed the reputation of everybody who didn't support your work because I'm a fucking lunatic. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just the way it is. I mean, for all we, I know, he could be a kaku guy, or you know. I don't right, really he could be care. anything. I, mean, I swear he has a Canadian accent because I've talked to him on the phone a lot, but he's usually like screaming at me, and it makes me upset because I'm just like I agree with you know I was trying to make him in a leader more of a leadership position, 
Yeah. Like, can you hear me? Oh, I'm sorry. I was watching the screen. It looked like you were talking. And it was muted. But yeah, so I, w- I wanted him to, you know, I was supporting him. I was letting him put everything he was posting on my page. So that's why this betrayal was really surprising. But that's what makes me think that he's an agent provocateur. Normal people don't do stuff like this. They just don't. Yeah, and and, and and it's been an ongoing problem, um, you know, for me, you know, Matt Lamon came to me and basically asked me how to, you know, get into the chemtrail community and how to Oh, good, take, good job, Jim. I'm yeah, just kidding. I know. Go ahead. I'm so proud of myself with Matt Lamon. Um, him and the director of the Zeitgeist Movement and two other film directors um, interviewed me and my wife for three hours. And I kind of laid out a plan for them. I was like, hey, make a group, you know, get people together and, you know, try to bring the community together because after we bring the community together and the, you know, Dane Wigington's and Russ Tanner's aren't in that group, they'll be the last man out. Therefore they will have outed themselves as not being part of the community. So he created actual chemtrail activists. I was an admin of the group. Um, and then magically overnight he flooded it with people. I don't know how he did that. I mean, it's just like a miracle. Like he had five, he came five, out of nowhere with like 30,000 you know, followers or something. And I'm like, wait a second, doesn't it only go up to five and then they remove your account? Cause that's what they've always done to me. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, you know, it went like that, and then suddenly, you know, he invited me to speak at the second chemtrail summit. I broke a tooth. As you can see here, I wasn't lying about that. And I was too proud to go on stage and be recorded. So I messaged him last minute. I was like, hey, dude, I was fighting. and broke a tooth, you know. Um, I'm not going to be able to make it, but... Dominic and Jolene are going to be there to represent weathermodificationhistory.com and they'll They did a kick-ass job of, by the way. Yeah, they did. I mean, they killed it. And apparently, you know, um, they got haterade from some of the other people that were there because basically the stuff on their table sold out. (laughs) Meanwhile, some of the other attendees weren't selling anything. Um, But what's really sick about it was Matt, you know, literally had, um, uh, Dominic and, and, um, and Jolene passing out flyers for hours before the, the show. And then when it finally came time for the show, he referred to them as the couple from Calgary. I mean, he didn't even refer to them as Dominic and Jolene from weather modification history.com. Because he certainly doesn't want anybody to see the website. And then he went on to make his movie Frankenskies. Um, where he literally stole material from our website. Scrubbed the watermarks off of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally his whole fucking documentary came from ClimateViewer.com and Weather Modification History. Um, so, I mean, literally Dominic's talked to me multiple times about suing him because our stuff's creative commons non-commercial and he's selling DVDs with our stuff in it with the watermarks removed. Um, you know, I don't, I don't understand why, you know, credibility comes with giving credit and, you know, that's something I'm really big on. And I, you know, if I, if I tell you something, I'm going to cite the source I got it from, um, that's why I had picked such a bone with Dane Steele on my patent list. You know, he didn't want to put my name on it. And then he's on Alex Jones going, yeah, I did all this research. Um, so yeah, if you can't trust a guy on something as simple as where he got his shit from, then how can you trust him on anything else? And, and then you've got these individuals like Rob Rubin who are nobodies, but they are, you know, constantly spreading stories like, Jim Lee's funded by David Keith, <laughs> which is freaking just, I mean, ironic. I mean, it's absolutely ironic. Um, and you know, it's unfortunate you had to go through it with Rob. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, but yeah, it's know. not the first time. It won't be the last. It's like the 18,000th or something time. Yeah. That's so okay. Yeah. Yep. So, so what he's talking about is on climateviewer.com slash nmod, I have this thing. It's an act to end atmospheric experimentation without notification. 
And I talk about NMOD, the Weather Warfare Band of 1978. I got an infographic on 10 technologies to own the weather to today. And down here, I said gaining support, what people are saying about NMOD. And I got Dr. James Roger Fleming, who I interviewed, and he says, I think you have a real important role you can play in this. I think there's a role to keep accountability there. And Dr. David Keith, who emailed me, who has cited me in papers. I mean, I actually have Jim Lee, climateviewer.com, as a citation in some of his geoengineering papers. He says, I think the public notice makes sense because I think transparency is very important for building trust. I think a 48 hours is much too short a period to notify people. I think a longer period makes sense to enable public comment on experiments. Obviously, one challenge is to define what constitute an, constitutes an experiment. Most sensor networks are available for public data access. Happy to lobby for more public access. Yours, David, and via email. And David Keith emailed me that. So this is where, you know, like most people don't know this, but I've been debating Ken Caldera and David Keith and, and their whole crew since 2011. And I debated on David on, on Ken Caldera's forums for three years before finally getting banned for saying that they're going to get tarred and feathered when people figure out what the hell they're up to. Um, and it was a quote from Masilamar <laughs> anyway, but it was it was an inside joke, and they didn't think it was funny. Um, but anyway, so D David Key sends me an email saying that he supports my legislation because he supports transparency. And that's where they whipped up this whole conspiracy. And of course, Rob blamed the whole thing on Ralph Eli. For those who don't know who Ralph Eli is, he's from the Liberty Beacon. And I was briefly helping the Liberty Beacon. Um, you know, let's bring them up so everybody can see them. Um, this is the Liberty Beacon, and if you look over here on the side, you see these advertisements. I coded that for them because they couldn't figure it out. <laughs> um, and you know, uh, Roger Landry, who runs the thing, you know, basically was like, "Hey, man, I really need help. I know you know how to do, um, you know, website coding." I'll give you a percentage of the advertising if you'll just fix this for me. And I was like, cool, you know, whatever, I'll do it. You know, always trying to help out other people who, you know, are in the community and are trying. So he wanted me to like call all these people. And I was like, look, dude, I don't have time to call these people and set up affiliate links for you. You give me the pictures, I'll put them up on the website. Simple as that. Um, and he promised me, you know, that he'd give me a percentage of the sales. I never got a dollar for any of that. Um, he gave me a one-time donation of a hundred bucks saying, thank you for all your work. I spent like maybe 40, 50 hours working on his damn website. Um, but what rubbed me raw was that, um, he did an interview with me and in the interview, you know, after spending 40, 50 hours, um, you know, putting all these ads up on his website, creating new sections for new people coming on to his website, um, he promised me an interview that he kept putting off when he finally did it. The interview was 30 minutes long. And, he, you know, his body language was like this. You know, so he's like, sitting sideways he's got shades on and he seems barely interested in the interview and he knew about my beef with dane wigginton and russ tanner and what do you know the very next interview he did was with russ tanner do you know how long that interview was an hour and a half <laughs> so i was offended <laughs> i mean you know, I tell you that the guy's bad mouthing me and, you know, I spent all this time building your website up for you. You promised me that I'm going to be a partner in the Liberty Beacon. You barely give me an interview and then you go interview my enemy, um, who That's is fun. literally, yeah, I mean, so I called Ralph and I said, Ralph, I'm sorry, but I just can't work with Roger. You know, I appreciate you guys. I love you mean it, but... I'm done doing things for the Liberty Beacon. And 
then I went to the, you know, the AMS conference. I did all these interviews with, you know, Jim Fleming, um, Raytheon, you know, U S Naval research lab, all this stuff. Um, you know, and I go to this weather mod conference and when I come back, suddenly Rob Rubin's saying that Ralph Eli is the one that told him. I was getting funded by David Keith, which of course I called Ralph and Ralph denied all of it. Who knows who's telling the truth, but yeah. is, it, is it that Ralph and company are butthurt that, you know, I didn't want to work with them anymore. Or is it that um, Rob Rubin made the whole damn thing up either way? I don't yeah, care. That could be. You know, I mean, it could be either or, um, but that's the kind of issues I've been running into. Um, and it's been constant, you know, the bottom line is I, I feel like that people just, they don't want anybody to see what we've got going on, you know, with weathermodificationhistory.com, what I've got going on with Climate Viewer 3D. I mean, God forbid people see my work. And it's, you know, it's as simple as just tossing a link, man. You know, it's not, it's not that big a damn deal, you know what I mean? I thought we were all in this together. So I made a video called, you know, it's time for the anti-geoengineering movement to unite. And what I did was I literally linked to all the groups that I could think of. And I mean, you can see right there, zero geoengineering, Jolie Diane, Agriculture Defense Coalition, Rosalind Peterson, even Dane Wigington, as much as I hate his guts and he hates mine. Even Russ Tanner, even though he hates my guts and I hate his. I wish you liked Russ Tanner because I really like Russ Tanner. We've been friends a long time. Well, I, I wish mean, you too. I, I've never, I've never ever heard him say anything bad about you. He's never talked about you to me ever. I didn't even know you guys had any drama until you told me not too long ago. Oh, I could bring it up for you on the screen if you want to see it. It's pretty. I was, uh, but there's, there's something else I want to say. I see Pam Jones is here. Okay, does Pam remember the time when she made a post in support of you and, um, and so, well, in support of Climate Viewer, it wasn't of you, and I went on there and I was like, yeah, I got your back. Do you remember when Rob wrote some, like, clunky comment above that? And, well, anyways, he contacted me after I, all I said was, Pam, I got your back. It had nothing to do with him, Rob, at all. And he contacts me and he goes, well, he goes, you better watch yourself, you know, supporting them and all this. He goes, that, that makes you look suspicious and all this. And start, I'm like, what? A Pam's uh, thing? What are you talking about? So, I mean, it's, it even goes that far. Because I just saw her name there. I know she remembers what I'm talking about. She, she made a post on my page, and he went on there and said, you know, I'd appreciate if you didn't uh, tag me in any posts like this again or something like that. And I said, well, don't worry. You can tag me. I got your back. I, I don't you know. know. I mean, I don't know. I'm just telling you, Pam's here. She knows what I'm talking about. It's not, it's probably still in the depths of my page somewhere. But the point is, he was constantly trying to get us not to like each other. Yeah. And Anybody. I mean, it didn't matter who it was. Yeah. And I mean, I, I've got it up on the screen right there. This is what you'll get if you post on Russ Tanner's group or, you know, um, you know, uh, Facebook page. But basically what happened was, um, <laughs> this is really sad, uh, but basically, because uh, see, I get emails from people like this, you know, saying, hey, you know, I posted this on Kim Charles Global Skywatch and I was banned. Um, but this is the this is the post that really set it off. And um, it's kind of lengthy. Jim Lee doesn't believe in chemtrails from his own mouth. And he had me in the um, shills and disinformation agents section on his website. Okay. And, um, Marie McLaughlin, love her to death. She, you know, she said, you know, Jim's a fantastically good and decent man. Character assassinations over dis difference opinion is very basic, not good, not helpful. And he says, there's no character assass ass assassination going on here. Only revealing the disinfo information being spread mm -hmm. and holding this good and decent man accountable for his ongoing threats and his character assassination against others, including myself and Dane. Because basically, he's a sidler for Dane, in case you didn't know. He's Dane's bud buddy. Um, and because I question Dane, you know, that... So what this really goes back to is... And I'll just make this very clear. I debated Dane Wigington and Russ Tanner back in 2013. 
and it wasn't even supposed to happen. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, I remember that. You want to know why? I'm one of the only people that heard that. How? Remember they transcri- they transcribed it. Do you remember that? They transcribed it after the fact. Is that the one you're talking about? I doubt it because it was recorded by a guy named John Masaria. And- yes, yes, yes. I absolutely. I was one of the only people that heard it. In fact, I'll take it a step further. I remember where I heard it, and I probably still have the recording. I if you have a recording that of that, I would give my left testicle for that recording. Okay, I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you I do. Get, it's in the depths of my, uh, of my heart. Guard. Please, God, get me that recording. But anyway, okay. so okay, go ahead. what happened was, um, basically, Dane Wigington was supposed to debate Mick West from Metabunk. And, Met- and Mick West never showed up. So John, out of desperation, called me and said, Hey, man, I've got this thing all set up to record. Um, can you please come on and just play devil's advocate? I heard the whole thing. Yeah. It got into God. He got into God and religion, and you busted him on being an atheist. I remember the whole thing. Yeah. So if, for those who didn't hear it, um, what happened was, you know, before we started recording, Dane's like, okay, Jim, you know, we're all on the same team here. So, you know, let's, let's keep this as friendly as possible and everything. And I, I mean, he was saying all this because he knows, like, he's been to my website. He's read everything. I got. He knows that, um, that this could go very badly for him. So he was trying to play the whole, let's just be friends here thing. And I was very friendly with him. You know what I mean? I didn't make it adversarial or anything like that. And what I did was, um, about 20 minutes into the conversation, I said, you know, okay, so Dane, you know, you're using a lot of slave speak and by slave speak, I mean, you know, high level descriptors, words that could have multiple meanings. Could you just give the audience your definition of geoengineering? And he could not. And he he started to attempt to and really started to fail at it. And I was like, wait a minute now, you know, geoengineering is this and what we're seeing is that. And, you know, and, you know, this is more like cloud seeding than geoengineering. I mean, I understand it has a geoengineering effect, but, you know, anyway, so very quickly he got off the phone. You know, he's like, I'm done here. Um, and then all of a sudden, after this, you know, I'd been on the phone almost an hour, uh, Russ Tanner speaks up and he's like, Hey, uh, just, Hey Jim, uh, Russ Tanner here. And I'm like, Oh, there's somebody else here on the line. I, what, what the hell? Um, and apparently he was the one actually doing the recording with his sound. Yeah. Board. He always does the recording. Yep, yeah. That's how it works. I didn't know. So, um, uh-huh. he's like, I'd like to take a crack at it. And I was like, okay, go ahead. So he starts telling his story and I'm listening, I'm nodding, I'm going, okay, okay, okay. And then he goes to the part where he says that he can smell chemtrails. And I go, what? And you don't know he can't smell chemtrails, Jim. He can, I mean, anybody can smell chemtrails. You don't know that. Well, Everybody has different senses, different things that they're sensitive to. I mean, okay, but here's the thing. I mean, is it possible that, how am I getting a second call? From overseas. Let's just cancel Answer that. it. No, can I, you answer I, it? I can't it answer two calls at once. They're just going to have to wait. Um, okay. Anyway, so yeah, he, he, he says he could smell the chemtrails and I'm like, you mean you can smell like, you know, the chemtrail fallout or, I mean, you can actually smell No, I can smell them. I know what distinctly what they smell like. And I'm like, where do you live? And you know, he didn't want to tell me, but he gave me a general idea. So I brought up the EPA's toxic release inventory map and I said, well, you know, you're actually downwind of several paint plants and, you know, several chemical petrol plants and all of this stuff, you know, you could be breathing any of that stuff. Um, how do you know they're not venting gas from there? Um, because if you're telling me that you can smell the chemtrail over your head, that shit is five miles away. And unless you're a bloodhound, there's no possibility that you can smell something five miles away. 
Yeah, but it could be the chemtrails from the day before that have fallen down. What goes up must come down. Yeah, I mean, I get that part, but I mean, still, you know, the, he was saying that literally as he could see them, that, you know, that he could smell them. And I'm going... He's always, he's always said that. I mean, you don't know that it's not true, but I don't think it's an issue. I think, I mean, that, I didn't really think it was an issue either, but we were having a debate, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, I, all, I I did was, all I did was say, hey, dude, I you know, I don't think you can smell chemtrails. I mean, I just think that's kind of ridiculous. Um, so anyway, um, I had made a video about Dane, and I'm like, I deleted that video, you stupid fucking redneck. I also debated you and Dane at the same time, and John Masari had deleted the tape. That's why you have a boner for me. No other reason. Um, well, before John Masaria deleted it, I heard it and I recorded it. I, he sent me the file and everything like that. That was many years ago. But yeah, I specifically remember it and I listened to the whole thing. Please tell me you have a copy of it because I will put it I, in I actually, I actually just pulled out my old hard drive and I've already connected it. And it has like 10 million files, but I'm going to be able to narrow it down. If I have it. Otherwise, it might be on one of my Chromebooks that are like dead. You know, but I'm... I, it's so many years ago, it's going to be hard for me to find it exactly. Try, try to find it if you can. That'd be great. But the thing about the thing about Russ Tanner that irked me the most was that if you disagree with him on your mm -hmm. forum and he calls you a, a shill, he'll literally post your IP address on his on his forum, which is a severe violation of you know privacy. And any kind of prick who would put somebody in danger just because he disagrees with them deserves a swift quick kick in the balls for that alone. Um, and, I've know, never seen him do it. I've never seen him do anything like that. And the post that you put up, I never saw that. Well, he so, did. I mean, you could see it right here and it's on the yeah, screen. Yeah, I understand. So, yeah, I know, but I, I believe, I honestly believe Russ has good intentions and he, that, that he really believes in his cause and everything like that. Well, here's the thing. If that were the truth, then then I, I would vehemently disagree. So after the whole okay. debate thing, after the whole, he put me in the shill section, after this thread you just saw up on the screen, um, I literally threatened to hack his website. I said, I'll take your whole fucking <laughs> forum out. Please. You either delete that post okay. or I'm going to delete Chemtrail Global Skywatch. And he said... If you did that, you would seriously be the boogeyman. I mean, you would have every single person despise and loathe you. I don't give a shit. I break things. Um, wow, well, you know, that would be horrific. A well, horrific I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, family. like, I was offended by it. And, um, you know, he said, you know, I, where I said that you pre PM and threatened to hack and take down mm -hmm. our website. I'm not making this shit up. I keep, I keep screenshots of everything on everybody. Um... He said, the police see it as a threat. They're not stupid or ignorant in contextual threats. A police report is necessary to document these threats. So if anything is attacked, we have a suspect. I said, call the FBI. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, he's like, it's going to happen. Well, he never did. I said, okay, Russ, you got your chance to flame me. Now it's my turn. Um, anyway, so he didn't believe me. And then, of course, I went to uh, what's called the U.S. CERT team, and I did a scan of his website and saw that he was using UBB forums, and I sent him a text, and I said, you need to update your forum software because you currently have a vulnerability in the version you're using. And in this document right here from U.S. CERT, it says exactly what I need to do to take full control of your forum. So if you think I'm You were evil, Jim. That was wrong. Oh, You're wrong for that. Oh, either. but at the end of the day, this is about speaking truth to power. And those who want to use their speech to try to take my power away, they're going to find out the hard way that I don't go easily into the night. Um, but at the same time, I was doing him a service. Because, you know... Any hacker could have come along and run that script and destroyed his entire website. So, Chemtrail Global Skywatch was down for like four days because <laughs> he had to figure out. How I remember to, that. He had I to, actually remember that. Yeah, yep. he, he had to patch his freaking software um, because he didn't know. And I was like, you know, 
hey, go update your forum software. I'm not actually going to hack you, but I want to be very clear with you. I can, and I know how, and if you don't fucking delete this post where you call me a shill and you're trying to destroy my reputation, I will. And trust me, there will be another one of these U.S. cert things put out a month or two from now. And just because you're using UBB um, forum and you're lazy and you're a redneck, you don't know how to update software and you won't do it regularly. So at any moment, I could decide to delete this. Anybody else could too. So watch your back. Um, the only problem, the only problem I have with Google Skywatch is the fact that, um, I, of course, I'm I'm not in the group. I've been banned more times than that from that group than I have from troll groups. But anyways, it's this one of their admins came to me and she said, you know, you have two of our admins blocked. You have to unblock them to be a member of our group. And I'm like, wait a second. If I block somebody, I block them for a reason. I don't allow forced connections, forced associations with people. You know, I mean, maybe I had an issue with that person. Maybe they said something I didn't like. Maybe I just didn't want them on my page, but I don't even know who you're talking about. But they were like, you have to unblock them. And then they started posting these weird names of profiles I'd never heard of and saying, yeah, you have them blocked and all this stuff and unblock them now and trying to force me. They were being real aggressive with it. And finally I said, you know what? Your group isn't worth it. Peace out. And I told Russ, I yeah. told on him, you know, but I mean, Russ, if, you know, Russ needs to take reins of that because it's his admins that are running that show. I mean, he, he of course, he's the director or whatever, but he allows them to, to do that to people like me that are Russ's friend. You know, so yeah, and I mean, it, like, at I'm the end of the day, it, there there's so many people who are like so quickly to throw around the shill gatekeeper. I never call Russ, Matt, Dane, or even Rob Rubin shill or gatekeeper. I think they're fucking egomaniacs. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think they're paid. I don't know. I think Rob. I think Rob could be an Asian provocateur from Canada, pretending I mean, like he lives in he could California. Be, but... That's my little conspiracy theory on it. Yeah, I mean, I have conspiracy theories, too. The difference is that I have an impeccable reputation because I only state, you know, generally speaking, what I can prove in a court of law, mm -hmm. and I back it up with citations. So I don't go running around and telling people mm -hmm. this person's a shill, that person's a shill, or anything like that. Um, I, you know, I state the facts, and I believe that those egomaniacs don't want people to see our material because, you know, in my personal opinion, there is no website better than weathermodificationhistory.com if you want to know what's going on in the world of weather modification. It's been cited by, you know, institutes and universities and governments around the world now. Um, okay, Jim, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. So I would say that most people that have a problem with you have a problem with the fact that you don't believe that they are intentionally spraying us with something. That it's I not have, just a I, byproduct I, of the fuel. I have, said, or the I have said differently, and I will show you right now. Um, and that's that's where most people get confused. Um, I did a video on it just recently. You know, I've talked many, many times about the CIA, um, and and then really what I believe, and and I said this to Russ. You know, after the whole interview. Thing. Uh, Russ and I spoke for three hours, um, which he recorded. <laughs> he has a recording of all this. I wish he'd put it out because in it, he said, you know, we really don't disagree on that much. Um, we only disagree on about 10% of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, so why are you busting my balls so much? Um, but it's time for the anti-geoengineering community to unite. This is when I linked to Dane Wigington and, and Matt Lamon and Russ Tanner and all of them on weathermodificationhistory.com. I said, you know what? Screw it. Just to prove that I'm not a gatekeeper and you are, I'm going to link to your website and you're going to continue to ban anybody who links to me. Same thing's true with Dane Wigington. Um, Matt Lamon and the rest, but in this uh, in this article, I just linked it up in in chat for everybody you can see. Um, I don't believe it's you know there's no secrets going on here. And this video originally was about you know how um, I believe 98% of what we see is sky pollution. Jim Lee, I believe 90% of chemtrails come from commercial flights. I believe that. Um, because I can actually okay, track all of... Explain off and on sprays. 
I, I I have explained that in um here. I just do a quick little a quick because one of my I'll, friends. I'll, I'll explain it in just a second. I'll, and that's right the problem after, that he has. He says, "Ask Jim about off and on sprayers." I'll explain it. I'll explain it in perfect detail right after this. So, secret government program spraying the skies. This is on my website. Okay. It was a conspiracy military experiments on unsuspecting public, written 2013. And this is about the zinc cadmium sulfide spraying that the U.S. Army Chemical Corps did. Next one's Chemtrails, Combatives, and Terrorism, written in 2015. This is about Agent Green, um, F. Oxysporum, all of the different kinds of chemtrails that were sprayed by the CIA and what was called Plan Columbia. You know, they were secret government programs to spray the skies. Documented, real facts. CIA Weather Warfare. Henry Kissinger, the CIA and Weather Warfare. Video details. Operation Popeye, Motor Pool, Weather Warfare over Vietnam. Basically, Henry Kissinger, the CIA, U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy did weather warfare over Vietnam. It took five planes. They didn't tell the Secretary of Defense. They didn't even tell the base operators. That's a secret. And they sprayed the sky with silver iodide and lead iodide. CIA Project Now Blue Rain Embargo on Cuban Sugar Crops, 1969-1970. They did cloud seeding over the Gulf of Mexico to make sure rain didn't land on Cuba. Secret government program to modify the weather. Documented fact. Moving forward. CIA Cloud Seeding Chemtrails and Rogue Geoengineering. Please read that. Video on that. The CIA Weather Warfare and Climate Terrorism, also 2015. Um, this one's particularly interesting because in it, they called a geoengineer named Alan Robach and they said, uh, Professor Robach, I got a phone call from two men who said they work as consultants for the CIA and we'd like to know if uh, some other country was controlling our climate, would we know about it? I told them after thinking a little bit that we probably would because if enough you put enough material in the atmosphere to reflect sunlight, we would be able to detect it and see the equipment that was putting it up there. At the same time, I thought they were probably also interested in if we could control somebody else's climate, could they detect it? This is straight from Professor Alan Robach, geoengineer. Okay, and this was CIA chill factory at the CIA weather query. So I started looking into this. Just the facts, we cannot detect rogue geoengineering. Je, um, Diane Seidel at the weather modification conference in 2015, albedo variability limits potential detection of engineered increases in reflected sunlight. So we can't detect geoengineering if it were illegal, if it were secret government program. Um, there's the video of it. You can actually watch it. And, uh, I talk about my solution. It was called the clarity clause at the time. Now it's the, you know, environmental modification accountability act. But regardless, did you know that CIA Open center on climate change and national security, 2009 CIA closes its climate change office, 2012. National security implications of climate change. This work continues to be performed by a dedicated team in a new office. So the CIA is now interested in geoengineering. $630,000 scientific study on controlling global climate. CIA backed it. To better understand the phenomena and implications of national security, the CIA reportedly closed its research center on climate change and national security last year after GOP members of Congress argued that the CIA shouldn't be looking at climate change. So, do I believe there's a secret government program going on? you damn right, and I blame it squarely on the CIA. CIA backed $630,000 study on controlling global climate. CIA Director Brennan speaks at Council on Foreign Relations, and he testifies about what? Geoengineering. The CIA's secret airlines. Um, history of clandestine services, histories of civil air transport. Here's another FOIA from the CIA um, reading room. Civil air transport, Air America, U.S. government secret airlines, Janet, which is called just another non-existent terminal, which is secret white unmarked planes, 
Sound familiar to you? They don't show up on flight radar. They leave extra huge plumes in the sky. So yes, I do believe that there is chemtrails and a secret government program. But I've also tracked many, many, I track all the flights going on. OBS disconnected reconnecting. Ooh. That's what you get, Jim. Oh, the CIA is mad. That's what you get. I'm trying to post a picture. <laughs> it will not let me post a picture in the comments. Insert. Nope, it won't let me do it, dude. Oh, well. Is it still live? Here, let's find out. I'm going to webcam myself real quick. Are we still live? I just I just started breaking into the CIA secret airlines, and I got uh, OBS disconnected, reconnected. Looks like we are still live. Um, It looks like we're still live. Okay, good. Yeah. I, I turned my VPN off for this. Yeah, because... it actually went up one. We're still live. Go ahead. Okay. Wow. Okay. So back to the, the secret government programs. So I was talking about the Janet Airlines, just another non-existent terminal. And what you'll notice is, you know, these are, oh, look at that. Yeah, it looks like it stopped, Jim. No, I, I'm seeing updates. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. It just, look, it's not playing anymore on mine. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm still seeing it over here. And regardless, I'm recording this locally, so it's going on YouTube. Okay, go ahead. I won't say anything. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, Janet, sometimes called Janet Airlines, the unofficial name given to the large and highly classified fleet of passenger aircraft operated by the United States Air Force to transport military and contractor employees. It mainly serves... For the Nevada t National Security Site, most notably Area 51, from private terminals out of Las Vegas, McCarran um, International Airport, it's called Just Another, it stands for Just Another Non-Existent Terminal, or Joint Air Network for Employee Transportation. But that's not the only one. Um, there are many of these. What just happened? I'm on the wrong link. Um... New York billing dispute reveals details of secret CIA rendition flights. Um, and you can see the rendition flight, pro, renditionproject.org.uk. Um, the Guardian has an article on this. You can actually see the flight patterns here. And 27 years later, CIA pilot tells of using secret Costa Rican airstrip to traffic cocaine and drugs. So... My point is, all things are possible. I see in my, where I live in Sumter, South Carolina, when I track flights, the majority of the flights, and I say 90%, are Delta Airlines or Southwest Airlines. So not, you know, secret government planes. That's why I focus a lot. On jet fuel because jet fuel is loaded with metals and I can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt in a court of law what those metals are how they contribute to Alzheimer's and a plethora of other diseases and calling it pollution gets me through the door when I'm talking to senators and things like that um, but just going straight in with it's all a secret government program you're gonna get shot down almost every single time that's why I try. That's why I speak the way I speak because I want to be heard and I want people to, you know, open that door to thinking about the fact that the CIA could be geoengineering the sky. And I have documented this all over my website. Um, you know, of course, Russ Tanner will never acknowledge any of the stuff I just showed you. And I've got posts going back to 2013, 2014, 2015 talking about the CIA and how they w did weather warfare in the past and how they're involved in geoengineering today. So I not only t talk about the secret government programs, I'm fucking telling you who's doing it. So of course they don't want anybody to focus on that. Um, and what's your response to that? Are you talking to me? Yeah. I mean, 
I'm straight up I, calling out the CIA. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I'm, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. It could be a multiple. It could be that and what what I'm thinking as well. I mean, I I honestly and believe that they are intentionally spraying stuff. I don't believe it's a byproduct. Yeah, but you're saying they. Just, I'm saying the CIA. That's the difference. Yeah, I agree. I've always thought that. Okay, so we don't disagree at all. And for all the Kaku members that are in the in the feed here, I am a Kim Tard. I do believe that chemtrails are real because it's happened in the past. And I mean, what's the slogan on weathermodificationhistory.com? I mean, you guys should know it by now. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. So if it's happened before, it will happen again. And even though there's a ban on geoengineering, it happened at the Convention for Biological Diversity in 2012. Even though there's a ban on weather warfare, it happened in 1978. Bans do not matter unless you can verify and you can catch people in the act, which is why I've been proposing my Environmental Modification Accountability Act. Because you said you were going to explain the off and on spraying. Okay, so we'll do that now. All right, so go to weathermodificationhistory.com and then do a little search for doped jet fuel. And you'll see that there's a post right here. I'm going to drop this link in chat. And this is your smoking gun evidence for how that works. By the way, no Facebook image preview. <laughs> you got to love that. Um, <coughs> Applying high fuel sulfur content at aviation cruise altitude combined with ultra low sulfur jet fuel on lower altitudes results in reduced aviation induced mortality and increased negative RE compared to the baseline aviation scenario. Tra Translation. Use biofuels on takeoff, create less carbon black soot around airports, kill less people. Use high sulfur jet fuel at altitude, mimic the Pinatubo effect or the volcanic eruption of Mount Pinatubo, which all these geoengineers are fascinated with, and put um, do stratospheric sulfur injections for solar radiation management purposes. David Keith wrote a paper and it's on self levitating soot. Photophoretic carries sulfur into the stratosphere, destroys ozone layer, affects rainfall, monsoons worldwide. Photophoretic levitation could loft particles above the stratosphere, reducing their capacity to interfere with ozone chemistry. The Indian Space Organization says they now have evidence that such particles existing up to 18 kilometers into the stratosphere, and there are about 10,000 of them for every cubic centimeter. It could only derive from emissions from aviation fuel. So how do you turn it off and on? Um, this is United States Patent Application 2013-034-0834, Peter Swan, Rolls-Royce, who makes jet engines, um, determining the resultant fuel composition for use by a machine in the ambient air conditioning to achieve the characteristic where the resultant fuel composition includes at least one of the first and second fuel compositions. Two jet fuels, one plane. A percentage of at least one of the first fuel composition and second fuel composition required to produce a resultant fuel composition. Here's what it looks like. Here's the pictures. Fuel system for vapor trail control. Two fuels, one tank. You can turn it off and on by mixing the fuels. It is controlled through the... All right, so here's the second one. Fuel delivery system, two jet fuels, one fuel tank equals contrail control. These are ice supersaturated regions. This is the patent number. And finally, control unit and method for controlling the supply of a vehicle with multiple fuels. Jet fuel electronic control unit, U.S. patent application 2011-01-01166. And in it, it strictly states, look, we've got one, one fuel tank for biofuel. We got another fuel tank loaded with sulfur and we can switch between the two using the jet fuel electronic control unit. By the way, this can be done remotely without the pilot's knowledge. 
So how does that work? They have this thing called the AVA, um, FAA's Next Gen. Really? Another unknown caller from overseas. Plus six one. What country is that? Um, so you got, you got two fuels, one tank. And Next Gen is a supercomputer run by the FAA. It routes where all the fly, flights go, okay? Um, and basically, there's something connected to Next Gen called the AEDT, the Aviation Environmental Design Toolkit. I can show you that. AEDT, there's my damn playlist. You gotta love that. And here it is Aviation Environmental Design Toolkit. This is what it looks like. I'm not making this shit up, guys. And basically what it does is it can design the environment. Aviation Environmental Design Toolkit. And what it can do is say, burn a certain amount of fuel here at this altitude and create clouds. Don't create clouds here because they'll trap heat create clouds here because they will cool the planet. So that's what the whole geoengineering aspect of using jet fuel and this electronic control unit is all about. From afar, via computer, the FAA can say, let's make clouds here, let's not make clouds there. All of this is on my freaking, uh, my geoengineering fact. If you go to Cirrus Clouds Matter, and you scroll down. I got a whole bunch of questions and answers on this. Scroll to the section that says, what are they doing about Cirrus Clouds? And you can see all the geoengineering, you know, references on using jet fuel for geoengineering. And then you see this. Stratospheric sulfate injections with commercial aircraft. Commercial aircraft could be used to deliver sulfate into the stratosphere by increasing fuel sulfur content and their in-flight and the flight altitude of intercontinental flights. The sulfur content of the fuel should be increased by about 50 times the current level to have a significant cooling effect. By the way, they had a series of experiments called the Sulfur Experiments. They started in 1994. They re go through 1999. Um, they're currently testing those biofuels. You can see it right here where they're actually flying into the chemtrails and seeing what the biofuels are doing. It's called biofuels for contrail control. Um, and you know, the U S department of agriculture farm to fly program, um, access flight, alternative fuel effects on contrails and cruise emissions, the commercial aviation alternative fuels initiative, CAFI, um, the Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative, ACRI. That's Dr. Rangasai Halthori, the, me, the dude me and you interviewed like three times. Um, and the list goes on. But Ulrich Schumann came up with this jewel, the Contrail Cirrus Simulation and Prediction Tool, COSIP. And it is basically built into the AEDT, the Aviation Environmental Design Toolkit. It predicts when planes are going to make clouds. It predicts if they're going to be warming clouds or cooling clouds. And that's how this all works. And if they, they're going to be warming clouds at night, they want to do serious cloud seeding to melt the clouds away. So, I mean, I don't know how much more clear I could be about all this. So this is Ulrich Schumann saying to at the ICAO colloquium on aviation and climate change in 2010, we want less warming, more cooling contrails predictable for operational planning. So since um, Dominic and I are going to be doing a special report on 9-11, I hope you guys will tune into it. It's going to be 9-11-2018 about the research that was done on 9-11 as it pertains to this subject. And what happened was on 9-11, they grounded all flights and Travis Menace, um, you know, basically said we've affected the diurnal temperature range and basically that chemtrails are trapping heat at night. They cool during the day, but they trap heat during the night. So, 
if we're going to do something about it, we need to figure out how to get rid of chemtrails at night and make them during the day, but only if they're going to cool the planet. And that's what Dr. Halthori said when I interviewed him. Hey, we want to make clouds by day, none by night. Yeah, I've, I've got to chime in now. So Dr. Halthori and I had done several interviews before you ever met him, which I introduced you to him. That's right. And I recently, oh. did, I no, I'm just coming correct. And I recently uh, did an interview with him, but I was wanting to ask you this whole time, did you want to do something again with that? I mean, now you have so much more information and, you know, yeah, I, I was, think I, it, I mean, I was, he's, he's the biggest door that we have, you know. Well, when I talked to him and I did this interview and he made the statement, we want clouds by day, none by night, um, Mick West went and emailed him repeatedly saying that Jim Lee is misusing your words. I didn't misuse oh, his words. No. I, I literally. Are you serious? Yeah, he did. Because Mick West is scared. Mick West went and, and uh, contacted my contact. That's scary. Yeah, well, he went and he when talked to. When you think about it, come on, guys. He talked to Hal Thorey and ahead. said, Jim's butchering what you said and claiming this and that. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm literally quoting you word for word. I had linked to your interview. It was an email interview. I put it up on Scribd. You can read the whole damn thing. It's right here. Uh, Citizen Inquiry of Contrails, Jim Lee, Dr. Angus I. Althori, 2017. And you can see my questions. Could you please tell me a little bit about yourself, your qualifications, your position at Acre? He answers it. Um, you know, and it goes on. You can see it's signed by him. Responses by R.N. Althori, page one. Um, and at some point during this thing, he literally says, you know, here, let me see if I can find it by doing this. We want. Well, he denies that chemtrail PDF. And I, you know, I had it in my video. I just straight up had it pulled up. And he's like, oh, no, that's not me. I'm like, look, it's you. It's you, your name. I mean, he's on that chemtrail PDF, period. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's involved with these programs. And he he knows a lot, you know. he's You, you guys were talking about all different kinds of programs. The ARM program. And the yeah. other stuff. Yeah, the atmosphere research. Uh, I'm just thinking. I'm thinking that we can do another stuff. interview. I mean, I spoke to him not too long ago, so I don't see. He told me he wasn't interested in talking to you again. That's what he had told me because, oh, because obviously I know, way, you, I know way too much. And, you have the information. You have the information that you could really battle him out with. When I'm calling him, I'm just bitching to him about chemtrails, like I do to everybody else. You yeah, know, but when so he's talking to you, he, he actually has to right have a case here. in point. Let me see if I can blow it up without. Uh, let me go back to it. So here's where he says it. And you know, there's no take backs on the internet. Um, let me go back to it now. I, I said, what do you think Ulrich Schumann meant when he said less warming, more cooling contrails predictable for operational control? <laughs> that was the thing I was showing you guys over here. Um, you know, this statement right here. And I sent him all of this in advance, okay? So I sent him all the references I was going to ask him about. And I said, I want to get your response to this. And he said this. Um, not sure where he says this and in what context, which was a lie. I mean, I linked him the actual document that that picture comes from beforehand. But regardless... Contrails during the day cause cooling because reflecting sunlight back into space. During the night, they trap infrared heat, causing heat. So it is a balance between the two time intervals. We would like to have more CICs during day and none during night. That is the head of the FAA, Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative, saying... Fuck all you guys who say you don't want chemtrails. Screw you if you say you don't want clouds. We would like more clouds. CIC stands for contrail induced cirrus. So that's their term for chemtrails. Contrail induced cirrus. It's Yeah, but it's not their decision and they're lying about it and that's the point. It, this is an intentional spraying operation. Explain U turns to me then. If it's just coming from the combustion of the engine or whatnot then why are these planes doing U-turns? Why are they always going over the sun? It's obvious. I mean, I have well, lots the, of footage. Going over like the Mike sun Decker. thing is a perceptual thing. I mean, going over the sun for you is not going over the sun for your, your neighboring county. 
you got to understand that. Okay. So that's, you know, I always Jim, try to explain it. Jim, it's over Jim the Lee. sun for you and a hundred miles away. The ones that are over blocking the sun for you are not blocking the sun for well, the I'm people. I'm telling you, God could come down from the sky and tell me that they're contrails, and I'd tell him he's full of shit. And that but is a fact. They're not contrails. That's so. where you're getting mixed up. There is, there. It it doesn't matter whether you call it a chemtrail or a contrail. What matters yeah, it is because what it's you. Because it's the intention of the spring. It's the, the 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 whole entire point of it. Is it just a uh, a bad fuel? Is it a, a, a additive or something like that, or is it an intentional spraying operation? There's a big difference, Jim. Yeah, I think that matters too. But what what the what matters the most is about the terminology you use, because whether it's intentional spraying or whether it's just pollution, what you end up with is a cirrus cloud. It doesn't matter whether it was intentional or not. It's it pollution regardless. It's it, pollution. It, I get it. It doesn't matter whether it was a chemtrail or a contrail. They created it after it spreads out and it covers the sky. It is a cirrus cloud. Right. But if it's a contrail, it's water vapor. If it's a chemtrail, it's aluminum, barium, strontium, cadmium, lead, and everything else. So there's wrong. a big difference. You can't no, clump wrong, them together. Wrong, now. wrong, 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 wrong. And, I, and I'll show you. Um, oh Lord! Here, yeah. we have to agree to disagree on some things, Jim, because you know that I'm like the okay, depopulation so agenda twenty one chemistry go. activist. And you're the jet, weather guy. How oh. jets make metal clouds? This is science. You cannot argue with this right here because this this flies in the face I'm of sure every I can. Every every scientist on the planet hates that they, that they even said this shit. So okay. The detected metallic component compounds were in, internally mixed with soot particles. The most abundant metals in the exhaust that they found were chromium, iron, molybdener, sodium, calcium, and aluminum. Also detected vanadium, barium, cobalt, copper, nickel, lead, magnesium, manganese, silicone, titanium, Zirconium. Considering that some fraction of soot can effectively act as a nice nucleating particle, also known as a cloud seed or con cloud condensation nuclei, and the dominant fraction of ice residuals in cirrus clouds contain metal compounds. The so are you saying that you believe that chemtrails are merely soot? It's soot filled with metal. In the Jesus, the, the, God, help me, Lord Jesus. Let it's, me get through this interview. All right, Jim, let's talk about something else real quick but, before my head explodes. But why would you? Why would you ignore that? I mean, it's. Straight, I'm not it, ignoring it. I'm saying it's an additional thing that we would have to worry about. It's also that I'm. Ne I've never disregarded your work, and I've never said you're wrong. I'm saying I agree with you, but I'm saying there's other stuff going on too. I I have never seen a photo of a pump or a pipe that I could not detect go and do a Google image search and find out where that photo came from. And usually it's like a oil dispersant in the back of a C-130. Yeah, but we have to put it, look at Mike Decker's videos. You know, he tracks them and you can clearly see the chemicals coming out of the plane. It is not water vapor. It's not coming out of the engine. I never said it's water coming vapor. Out of something. I didn't say like it's coming out of the wing. About water vapor. I'm talking about metals. Even when I was at the EPA hearing, what did I talk about? metals i'm talking about metal coming out of planes and the metal is already in the jet fuel i can prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt i have mass spectrometry i have but scientific we're not paper saying that you can't paper. prove that we're saying there's also additional things that are going on additional spraying operations and i agree with I'm you on that you. I, I believe that the CIA, I watch it. how can there be no aircraft for four days no chemtrails or contrails and then all of a sudden at five o'clock, right when it's about to, the sun is about to set, here come out four planes that are just spewing shit, have no direction, no flight path. Come on. I, I Hey, I agree with you that there is something shady going on, which is why I'm always looking for evidence. But at the end of the day, you know, planes circling, you know, they do that because they're, you know, the flight pattern's full. I've been in a plane encircled for two hours one time. It sucked ass. 
Um, they had a, a, a recent uh, article I read about a plane that was flying to Hawaii. They literally had to circle for six hours because they were too heavy to land. They would have literally had to dump all the fuel in order to land. So these people were trapped on a plane that circled for like five, six hours. Okay, um, well, that's that one example. What about the five from yesterday here that were just doing loops around the sky? I have circles. I have all kinds of videos of crazy you're evidence in Virginia, here. You're in I mean, I, I agree with you, like, Gem, and I believe in your work and stuff, but I, I mean, no one will ever convince me that there's not some secret undercover military spraying operation from the UN, Council on Foreign Relations, something Illuminati-ish going on here, you know, that they're I, trying to kill us. And I've, That's and what I've I think. About look, at the, look at the food, the poisoning of food, the water, uh, poisoning us with the medicine and everything. Let's go all the way down the line. Everything's messed up. So it's just one part of a huge agenda just to take down the whole planet. That's what it looks like. Yeah, and I mean, I, I've talked about that too with the NATO single fuel concept thing and how NATO controls the chemtrails. And, you know, I agree with you on that. But, you know, I don't, I think that it's it's ridiculous to you know, ignore the fact that, you know, um, that, that just the jet fuel alone is loaded with metal. And when you burn it, it gets it gets stuck in soot. The science is David Keith himself, geoengineer, said we can use soot to put sulfur and metals into the freaking sky, and that's exactly what's going on. So whether it's you know the CIA doing it, whether it's NATO doing it, or whether it's Southwest and Delta Airlines doing it, they can all do it the exact same way, and it's just with jet fuel. So that's why I focus on it because. The, the geoengineers say it. I've got military documents from um, the U.S. Air Force saying let's use carbon black soot to make cirrus clouds. Um, Dominic Ramos found papers from 1958. U.S. Navy creates um, and destroys clouds with carbon black soot. So, I mean, all the all the evidence I've found keeps coming up the same thing: soot and metal, soot and metal. And whether it's U.S. Air Force, U.S. Navy, CIA, NATO, or just commercial flights, what they all have in common is soot and metals and sulfuric acid, obviously. So, I mean, I appreciate your perspective on this, and I can agree to disagree on some things. Um, and the day we all agree is the day <laughs> we can all be wrong. Go ahead. But, you know, I take a very scientific approach to this, um, you know, and that's that's just the way I do. And you yeah, know. I've been researching this topic for seven years. I take a scientific approach to it myself and a logical approach. And I use my own senses and my own research. And from all the people that I've spoken to, all the countless federal agents and officials and you know people in media and politics and stuff, I, it's a huge cover up. If it was just in the soot, then why is why is everybody covering it up? Why is everybody denying that it's even happening? It's, it's very And then when simple. you say, oh, that's the contrail. Well, the contrail is supposed to dissipate. These monsters aren't. So what are these? Is this a new breed of contrails? Well, then y'all fucked up the fuel. Well, then why aren't they fixing the fuel after 15 years of this going on? I agree with you. And, and, and the way I whip, you know, on the meteorologists are, they say it's, it's just a condensation trail. The next question out of your mouth needs to be condensating on what? Because condensation doesn't just occur on its own. It has to create a cloud. You need three things. You need dust, some form of dust, water vapor, and some electricity. So you got the soot and met with this loaded with metals. You do have water vapor. That is true. Just the jet fuel makes water vapor. So they're not lying about that part. The part they don't want to talk about is what the condensation sticks to. And it's sticking to soot and metal. And then the third part is ionization. And they're called chemi-ions. There's ionization that happens up in the atmosphere. And that's what, it's like rubbing a balloon on carpet and you can stick it to your head, static electricity. So static makes water stick to soot makes a cloud i mean it's that freaking simple so you have to have in, or, in order for you to have a contrail that sticks around and doesn't just melt there has to be enough ice on sticking to something 
a cloud seed, an ice nucleating particle, whatever the hell you want to call it, cloud condensation nuclei, it, water vapor has to stick to something to get big enough to make the cloud in the first place. So they call it a condensation trail and they say it's just water vapor. You'd say condensating on what? And the meteorologists immediately go, oh, shit, I'm in trouble. Because <laughs> they don't know. Because they don't know. And I just read yeah. to you in that paper. It's in all of those metals. That's what they're sticking to. They're sticking to soot. It said all of these metals, aluminum, barium, and all the other metals I just mentioned, are internally mixed with soot. So they're inside the soot like some kind of dirty pill. And the water sticks to that soot. It's coated in sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide. Okay, wait, why didn't we have chemtrails, persisting contrails, over 15 years ago? I mean, 2005 is the first time, so I'm just going to start at that. Before 2005, where were all these persisting contrails? They it didn't got, exist. It got worse because, like I said in my NATO paper, from 1988 to 1996... They converted from gasoline to diesel fuel in every single NATO flight. That's 22 countries. And when they finished in 1996, the very first time the word chemtrail was ever used on the internet, and I've read the first article ever written with the word chemtrail in it, the entire article was about JP-8 jet fuel. And it's a military-grade fuel made out of diesel fuel, my father-in-law, who was the chief master sergeant in the Air Force for 30 years, corrosion expert, worked on fuel systems. After I did all the research, I said, hey, what happened with this whole single fuel concept thing with NATO when y'all switched to diesel fuels? He said, oh, Jim, it was hell. We had so much carbon black soot um, building up in the engines. We had to redesign the combustors. We had to re change out fuel filters. It practically destroyed the engines. So... 1997 was the first time the word chemtrail was ever used. It happened one year after they finalized the single fuel concept to switch to diesel fuel. And that diesel fuel is loaded with freaking metals. So that's why I focus on this so heavily. Um, I got a, I got a picture of it. In fact, where is it at? Are cirrus clouds filled with metals? Yes. And there it is. Let's put that up on the screen. And as you can see, JP5, the jet fuel they were using before, 2,000 parts per billion of aluminum, went to 9,360 parts per billion after they switched in 1996. So suddenly, they tripled, at least, the amount of aluminum coming out of planes. They... Calcium, which is actually more important, and I'm going to be doing a whole lot about that in the near future, went from 5,000 parts per billion to 31,000 parts per billion. That's a cloud seed. Strontium went from 70 to 351. Titanium from 35 parts per billion to 1,056 parts per billion. So that's when the chemtrail conspiracy started. And contrails have persisted and turned into cirrus clouds as early as 1948. We've got complaints. In 1958, the U.S. Air Force literally told a town, if you don't like the clouds over the town, move. So you can go through the newspaper articles on weathermodificationhistory.com and read it all. Um, the airline industry got sued for making um, chemtrails over Illinois and New Jersey in 1970. Um, but at the time, they called it smoke pollution of the sky. Then yeah, they that's got what we have right now. Major smoke pollution of the sky. And I don't care if it's been happening since 1945 or whatever. It's happening now in a way that it's never happened in my lifetime before 2005. It's gotten worse. And I will always it's be only gonna get worse. of what the hell is going on and try to stop it. Because this is crazy. And talking to you, Jim, i got to be honest with you. All this stuff that you've been telling me, I've been sitting here like, oh, God. God, don't let me say the wrong thing. Because I totally respect you, Jim, and you know this. We've you been can say whatever you want. I'm not going to bash but you can because I, just I, say you know, that I, I want disagree you to, with what you're saying. I and, want you to say your truth. You know what I mean? And like I say, the day we all agree is the day we could all be wrong. But for, for Okay, I just think it's, I think it's more intentional 
than what you're giving it credit for. In oh, fact, I, I know I don't, I think it's, it's intentional. definitely intentional. I've shown in this video we just made it is intentional. Dr. Hal Thorey said we want more clouds by day. That's intent. Wait, 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 wait. You said Dr. Hal Thorey said that? Dr. Hal Thorey said we want more clouds by day, none by night. Okay, and that's with that program where they were taking in the emissions and testing them and trying to reduce contrails? Yeah, the access flights. Now it's called ND Max. Okay. They're doing the they're doing the third series of tests right now. Biofuels for contrail control. And the whole idea is make clouds all day and then melt them away at night or try to avoid them at night because at night heat escapes back into space. So if they don't, they're going to pay carbon taxes. If they do, they're going to yeah, get there, Is there any possible way that you can contact? I've already contacted the coordinator for the EPA hearing about, you know, how they were going to have a second EPA hearing on it, and then it never happened. Do you have any way to get that to happen? Um, right now, the way it stands, you know, I covered what happened after our EPA hearing. Um, and it didn't go very well because, you know, Obama and company got in during the Trump election and screwed everything up, but I'll bring it up on the screen real quick, just so you, in case you didn't know. So jet biofuel enlisted for contrail control 2013, 2015. That was our EPA hearing. This is August 11, 2015. Now, during the Trump election, July 25th, 2016, breaking EPA to limit greenhouse gases from airplanes. So, after all of our testimony, the EPA said, fine, we have got to do something about greenhouse gases from airplanes. No mention of, of metal particulates, like I said. No mention of cloud creation. We're going to limit greenhouse gases. So, quickly, a week later... White House releases Federal Alternative Jet Fuel Research and Developing Development Strategy. Alternative jet fuel is biofuel, alt jet fuels. Then, September 3rd, 2016, China, U.S., and Europe pledged support for Global Aviation Emissions Pact. So the ICAO got together and said, we're going to do this biofuels for contrail control thing. Then, September 12th, 2016, about a week later, Greens moved to dismiss EPA lawsuit over airplane emissions. So, the same people that started the lawsuit, they went and they threw it out of court so that the EPA would not regulate the airline industry. It's the second time in history they've been sued over making clouds and screwing up the sky and got out scot-free, no laws, they're still not regulated. Finally, October 10th, 2017, non-governmental organizations slam UN Aviation Agency plan for biofuels. So I was right all along. In my speech, I said, your current plan is to use biofuels, and this is all bullshit. It'll actually lead to more climate change. I've done articles on how growing gasoline will actually lead to more climate change and, you know, a dust bowl. And here you go. This is one I was about to do a video on, but a few rainy seasons won't stop the coming drought. So because they've been cutting down trees, because they're mass growing crops of, you know, jet fuel now, um, we're going to end up with a dust bowl 2.0. And that's where, that's the big story that nobody wants to talk about. And I'm going to be doing a video specifically about this in the near future, but that's the truth of the matter is that they threw out our lawsuit because they plan on putting biofuels in these planes. No, no, no. See, that's, that's where it's unacceptable for me. So we need to go back to that part. There is no throwing out of our testimony. So what do we do to push forward? Can, uh, do we just contact the same lady and try to, I mean, why are we not able to get another interview with the EPA that we've been contacting for seven years now? Um, I would probably blame the, what's it, Scott Pruitt, um, <laughs> the Trump administration. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's just, out. He All just, right, he, so, he generally doesn't um, give a shit about the There's nothing that you can do, but I'll, you know, so. we can both try to do something. And then what about interviewing, like getting, 
getting some type of a conference together or something like that. I've been thinking about this with the EPA. Why can't we do something with them? Why are they not talking to the public? The best thing we can do is get up in front of the FAA and the EPA with thousands of people going, this is enough. We need to, um, you know, put a stop to this. Uh, you know, we're tired of planes making clouds on real secret operation umbrella. So you mean set something up at some FAA headquarters in Washington, D.C. and go there with a bunch of people and try to try to get them to talk to us? Um, yeah, I mean, literally demand their attention. That's the only way we're going to do this. Dominic Marama just put up a video about these chicks in, um, in, uh, Canada and they did something called Operation Umbrella. And basically it was like 30,000 women took to the streets and they protested cloud seeding and they gave all their reasons why and they put a stop to it and in that there it is right there operation umbrella 60,718 signatures collected to ban artificial rain making experiments in quebec um video link you can see it over on weather modification histories channel i'll drop both of those in chat um but yeah that's that's what happened you know that and it and it worked um, you know, we gotta, we gotta learn from the past on how to be effective. And this is an example of, you know, people who got organized, they called it operation umbrella. All these women took to the streets with umbrellas and said, look, we don't want, we don't want artificial weather modification. And they got it banned in, in Quebec. So, I mean, unless we can come together you know, um, Martin Luther King says those who love peace need to learn to organize as effectively as those, those who love war. So that, but that brings us full circle back to this Rob Rubin thing, Rob Rubin, <laughs> Russ Tanner, Dane Wigington, they don't want to work together for a solution. Um, they just want to focus on, you know, scaring the hell out of people and keeping their viewership up. And I could give a damn if you like me. Um, I want a solution. And I and that's why Dominic and I are so busy, you know, trying to figure out the past so that we can find a solution for the future. And the more we know about the past, the more we are armed to deal with it in the future. And this this Operation Umbrella is an example of people who won in the past. Um, so this is the kind of model we need to follow. We need to organize protests in the right places. We need to go to the FAA. We need to go to the EPA. Hell yeah. I want to just do, I want to be able to confront the EPA. I have all these open cases with them and they've blacklisted me and you already know the situation with that. But like I have current open cases with them because I'm constantly filing my claims. So I want to be able to like, since you were able to get us in there before, I want to, I mean, what do we have to do? Just. Is there a way to make an appointment in Washington, D.C. with the EPA? I mean, or was that just uh, a really special thing? It was a special thing, and it, but that doesn't mean that it can't happen again. Because history does yeah. repeat itself, and we definitely need to have another frank discussion with the people who are supposed to be regulating this industry. And they're getting away with murder. No pun intended. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, and, and as far as the military goes... You know, the CIA may run the show, but it's all done out of Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, and China Lake in California. So, if you want to know who's modifying the weather, the U.S. military, China Lake in California, is where they invented the cloud seeding bomb. It is where they're doing weather modification today. All of this is on weather modification history. You just go up here and click on environmental warfare. And you can go see. There's my stuff on the CIA and rogue geoengineering. Um, but if you scroll down just a bit, you can see the FOIAs. And they're all right here. FOIA reveals U.S. Air Force Geophysics Directed Weather Modification Program. FOIA reveals U.S. Navy Weather Modification pro Program still active at China Lake. 
Um, FOIA U.S. Air Force paper, Counterforce Weather Control, Spacecast 2020, happened before owning the weather in 2025. And then finally, Test Technology Symposium 1997, where the dudes literally said, Weather mod modification using carbon black. Soot. Increase cirrus cloud cover. To deny visual satellite or high altitude reconnaissance, decrease light level for nighttime operations. So I back everything I'm saying about this soot and metal shit up with the military's own words. You know, it's straight from their own documentation. If you go back to the FOIA, um, which one was it? It was this one right here. What does it say? You're not even going to believe it. Scroll down. That thing says, weather modification using carbon black, 1994. The other paper I just showed you was from 1997, after owning the weather in 2025. Why? Increase cirrus cloud cover. Deny visual satellite or high altitude reconnaissance. So the military wants to make clouds so they can block out satellites in space that can spy on us. Using soot. So... I'm not fucking crazy. I'm backing up. I am shoving all this down the throat of chemtrail believers going, all the proof is already there. You just got to know it and read it and then memorize it and take these documents and go to the right places and say enough is enough. So I fully agree with you. Secret government programs, militaries involved, CIA's involved, and... There's a pollution problem with commercial aviation, all of which comes out of the jet fuel, and all of the all of the signs all point to the same damn thing: carbon black dust and soot. Just just my personal opinion, backed up by a fucking mountain of evidence. Right, it's a good theory. I mean, you're like I said, you're probably right about that aspect of it, but I will always know that there's more to it than just that. I don't see how. I mean, I'll, I'll leave you with You don't see how when oh. they are poisoning our... Why are they putting fluoride in our water? Why are they lying to us about space? Why are they lying to us about everything? I don't know, but what I do know is that carbon black soot makes clouds, and that's... Right, but see, no works. one's disputing any of that evidence. Well, what you're trying to say is that you don't believe, I mean, if you're saying that you disagree with me or you can't see that there's anything more to it, I'm saying there's a sinister agenda, Agenda 21, to depopulate the planet by using many different forms of poisoning us, and after a while, it will kill us off. Oh, I, agree. I, I agree with you on that. And I talk about that in the paper I called um, about technocracy and replacing the water cycle. But that, you know, we're talking specifically about clouds right now. This is right, 25. and that's what I'm specifically speaking of, chemtrails. You're talking about clouds. You're talking about contrails. I'm talking about chemtrails. I'm talking about something else. Yeah, there's and a chemtrail. That is a chem Do you agree Go this ahead. is a chemtrail? Navy scientists I'm create not, I'm clouds. I'm not near my computer. I'm laying in my couch. Jim, okay. I'm not near the computer. Well, this is from 1958. Navy scientists creates clouds, breaks them up. Using right, cloud seeding has been around since the beginning no, of the no, 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 no. uh, Cloud airplane. seeding is different than creating a cloud. You have to have a cloud to do cloud seeding. Right, so, contrail cirrus, is that what you're talking about? No, this is Navy creative. We dropped carbon, this is quote, we dropped carbon black suspended in liquid over a track a mile long and produced a solid line of clouds one mile long, Dr. Van Stratton told a reporter. When we dropped a hat, one and a half pound dry packages of carbon black, we produced single clouds with each drop. So they were making clouds using carbon black dust and water. Making clouds, not cloud seeding, like weather modification, like trying to make rain. They were making clouds. September okay. 23rd, 1958, the Navy No said one is disputing any of this. See, that kind of makes me feel a little straw manny right here. I don't know if that's the right term, but it's where someone 
will try to put an argument and, and fight it out, and they act like you have an opposite opin uh, opposing opinion on it. I'm agreeing with everything you're saying, but it's, I'm telling you that I also believe there is a sinister agenda by the elite to kill us all. And that's just my personal opinion. No amount of scientific evidence that you pull from anywhere. And a lot of your sources are government stuff, like NASA. When you were talking earlier, I'm like, oh, God, now he's talking about that NASA. NASA. I don't that was NASA. Ulrich Lohmann from Sweden. In, uh, earlier. In, I'm talking about earlier. I just don't, I don't trust any of the sources. It doesn't were, mean I don't and, trust. And, and those were FOIAs that came from the sunshineproject.org. Their website has been well, deleted. Well, you don't even know what. I don't even think we're talking about the same thing. Again, you're straw manning me. Jim, I'm not, chill out. I promise, I'm, I promise it's okay that for me. It's okay for me to have a different belief than you, and it doesn't mean that I don't also believe what you're saying. What about Sometimes? it? do you not believe is what I don't understand. Okay, well, the one thing is with the obvious uh, photographs and uh, videos that we have where you can clearly see the chemicals coming out of the plane. For me, I mean, I can already see it happening. I already know it wasn't happening before 2005, period. You can explain that away with the JP-8 or the change of the diesel fuel and whatnot. Okay, that's fine. That kind of makes sense, but it wasn't 1995. It was 2005. That's a decade time of difference for there to have been contra uh, pollution that I would have been witnessing during that time if it was simply during the transfer in 1995, like you're saying. There's other things like the off and on spraying. When I asked you to explain it to me, man, you lost me in the first sentence. I was trying to follow you the whole time, but you're way smarter than me. And I understand and appreciate that. But I was trying to follow you. I'm like, wait a second, hold on. let me get all this information in. Wait, I've already lost. Hold on, hold on. You know, it's hard to follow because you gave me this huge explanation, and I still don't know what the answer was of how how a trail can go. Literally, you see it sputtering off, you know, yeah, and then it'll they, do the, thing it, like, the, the simple answer no, is they can use it's two it's jet chemical, fuels. It's chemical. They use it's two not, different it's not kinds of fuel. It's not a natural phenomenon, Jim. They use two different kinds of fuel. There's an electronic control unit inside the plane that can switch between the two. How can you not okay. understand that? No, that, very, that makes sense. That's very How would simple. I not understand and that? I, and that's I, not what I you got, told me I, before. That's, that's exactly not at all what, what you I told said. me before. Now you're trying to make me look stupid for, not, your, I for your listeners. I, I that's pro, no, weird. No, I, I never intend to denigrate you. I okay. said that. I showed the patents. You may not be seeing you the didn't not, You didn't say something simple like that, but I don't believe I don't believe that's the case. I mean, even if that's your explanation well, uh, well, or whatever, I don't believe that. And I believe that um, I don't I don't consider you a, a disinformation peddler just because you don't believe everything that I believe in the agenda at all. Um, but I can't understand. I I understand how people get frustrated with you when you when you kind of exclude the intention of evil that goes behind chemtrails, that it's actually intended to do something bad. I think that's what I, I you're believe the intention is to do geoengineering. And I believe that just like with every corporation, it's profits over planet and people. Just like with, right, I agree. with fracking, just like with the cosmetic industry, the food industry, every single industry, it's profits over planet and people. Why would this be any different? Yeah. I mean, they don't, we never they, needed to the, 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 the simplest the answer before. is they do not give a shit about you. Ted Turner has, you can go watch a video of Ted Turner saying there's too many people on the planet. I mean, we know that there are the elites that believe that they should depopulate the planet. And they're doing a, all of the industries, the capitalist industries are doing a fine job of doing that because they're killing the shit out of us. Why would the airline yeah. industry be any different? All right. They're not any different. They are, they're putting all metal right. particles the in the path. sky it's that are killing people. It's the flight path that can't be explained away. It's the cover-up. It's the uh, ongoing, I mean, look at how long. We're talking about seven, eight years now that I've been filing these complaints, never to have any of them publicly addressed except for my testimony. Give me a break. That's you a gotta freaking understand, conspiracy. When you're call, when you're calling the FAA, you're talking to some low-level person who doesn't know shit about shit. 
And no, I'm not talking to low. I was talking to the head of the FAA, the head of the EPA. These weren't low level people. When I was the ta- head of I NASA. I was talking to him with what are you. you talking and when about, I said Jim? that to you, I said, low level people. Where are you talking about when I was talking to Lorraine Stipp, the operator? Everybody else I was always talking to were FBI, high ranking ATF, I mean, FEMA. I've talked to every single, all the levels of military. I reached the highest level of military over at Oceana that one can't. I'm sorry, you're getting me all hysterical, but for you to for you to say that I was talking to low-level people, I've been doing this for a long time, no, Jim. When we were talking I've to Dr. To Randy Sire Health people. Or, it's in your interview. I said to him, when people call the FAA and say, hey, what's up with the chemtrails? Why do you say chemtrails are not a thing? Those are contrails, and they are completely normal. Instead of saying, you know, we at the FAA are concerned about the chemtrails also, that's why we are currently testing biofuels so we can take control of them and create clouds all day long and try to melt them away at night with serious cloud seeding. Don't you think that would be a more honest answer? And his response was, yeah, I think we could do a better job at communicating that to people. We do fail Right, I remember that. that. So, I mean, even he admitted in our interview together that they are <laughs> terrible at freaking communicating the truth. You just made me so mad, Jim. You just made me, ooh, you made my, uh, <laughs> it was just like, I thought you were like belittling my work and I'm I really not, take what I do I'm seriously. not at all. I I'm not at all. You know that. Well, yes. let's wrap this up. We've been on the phone two hours. Um, I really didn't expect it to go this long. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think a good debate is always healthy. And, you know. But I, I shouldn't be debating you. I, we're I not, we're not. not debating, but I'm just saying, I think yeah. that, you know, people expressing their ideas and not being scared to disagree and, you know, just having a discussion about a thing, that's a good thing. I hope that a lot of the people watching this can take, you know, what they're going to take from it. Um and that, you know, I've shown that I'm not scared to debate my points. You're not scared to debate your points. And, you know, I think that, you know, personally, when it comes to depopulation, it's just at the end of the day, you know, capitalist companies just don't give a shit about you until you have sued them. And that's just it. You know what I mean? In every single industry I've ever studied, until you can prove damages and you got their ass up against a wall and you you can say, I can prove that your product has caused me harm, they do not give a damn and will continue to try to make as much profits as possible. Uh, Fentanyl being the best example. I mean, we got an opioid crisis and they know that shit kills people deader than a doornail with tiniest of dose and they just sell it like crack. They, They love it because it's killing people left and right. So, I mean, the airline industry is no different. They've been sued twice, 1970 and the one that we went to, and both times they circumvented the law. So they're still polluting the hell out of the skies. Um, the U.S. Air Force, U.S. Okay. Navy, CIA, they're doing secret programs to geoengineer the sky and do weather modification. No accountability whatsoever. That's why I proposed, you know, this NMOD Act um, to try to bring some accountability to it because the least we can hope for is to build a sensor network to catch them in the act, you know, and to try to get the Weather Warfare Ban of 1978 some teeth so that we can catch people who are doing this because, you know, without some kind of honesty, we're never going to get anywhere. Is there anything else you want to say before we go? You want to call me an asshole? Yes, I would like to say thank you, Jim Lee, for this discussion. And um, I think both of us are pretty much uh, steadfast in our concerns and uh, working our way through this horrible system of things and just trying to expose what we can along the way. I appreciate all your endeavors, and I will continue to support you and promote you and whatnot, um, even when we disagree. You're not the worst person to disagree with. I just hate debating you because I'm like, no. Oh, U-turns, off and on spring. I have like a whole list of things. I know. and I mean, I look at these things and I try to be pragmatic. You know, I, I you know, right before Rosalind Peterson died, she started talking about the, the circular flights and she came to the realization that, you know, there are some shenanigans, but they're explainable. 
um, if you really want to know. And I really want to know. So I'm going to dig into it. And then once I have all of it documented, I present it to people. Um, yep. That's just the way I do. And right now I'm suffering with some health issues. And I'm trying to take yeah, this as easy as possible. Um, you know, to, to be as stress-free as possible. <clears throat> but of course... Oh. Uh, then you're in you, the wrong field for that. Yeah, then you tell me you know, Rob Rubin's talking shit to you about me, and I'm like, that guy's still at it. So yeah, we're going to have a discussion it. about it and, you know, just put everything out in the open again. And yeah. uh, Fletcher Hayes just said, please, you know, remind me who the guest is once again. Um, her name is Amanda Day. Madison um, Star Moon. Madison Star Moon. Madison Star Moon. Do I, have yeah. I had you up here on the screen. Let me. See if I can find you one more time. There it is. Let me bring that up. There we go. Amanda Danielle Bays on Facebook. Her profile ID. I'll drop it in chat real quick. She is also linked in the top. You can see I've got her. It says Rob Ruman is targeting Amanda Danielle Bays. You can just click on her name up there. It's in the top of the chat. But, um, yeah, she went with me to the EPA hearing. We've been friends for a long time. And, um, you know, I've been told by many people, I can't believe you support that crazy chick. And I'm like, yeah, but that crazy chick had the balls to go speak in front of C-SPAN. You didn't. So, yep, and I have all the people coming to me saying, I can't believe you associate with that show. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, what are you, you going to do? <laughs> the best we could do is just continue on. So yep. I, I, right. I wish you the best of luck and I hope that you continue you to go. make waves and raise awareness. And um, I appreciate you coming on here and telling your story about Rob, the divider in chief, uh, Ruben. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks much. Tamara. You take care of yourself. You too. Love you. Mean it. All right. Bye. So everybody out there, remember attack ideas not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from y'all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.